talking about growing. It is time for us to grow. We cannot continue to stay in the same place. Just like a seed has everything that it needs to grow on the inside of it. There were some other videos. I don't know if that one shows it. It's like, maybe you can find one, Jaden. It's like they put the seed on the edge of the, of the glass with the soil. And it's like day one, day two, day three. And it's like, you can see the little bean. I think there's one that's like a sunflower seed. It's similar to that kind of video, but it actually shows the seed on the side of the glass. Everything that that plant needs is where? Everything that that plant needs is where? Everything that that plant needs is where? In the seed. Who said that? Liam. Good job, Liam. Get him a cupcake if you want one. Do you want one? He, can't, he doesn't like frosting. What? He doesn't like frosting. Bro, so you don't want a cupcake? You don't have to have one? Use your words. Okay, thank you. I've got like a million people talking for you. Bro, he's going to eat the cupcake. Leave him alone. Liam, everything that that's, that plant needs is where? In the seed. It has everything that it needs. Like literally, when you watch this clip, hopefully it's the same one that I've been watching. I think it, well, it might have been a short. I'm not pretty sure. Okay, sweet. So you put it in and then you could see it and then it busts open. And it's just like so amazing how everything is in that one seed. It all comes from that one seed. Now the soil is what facilitates the growth. Who knows what it means to facilitate? take care of it. It provides a place like this building right now is facilitating our opportunity to have church, church, to praise, to worship, to give, to sow, to hear the word. And so the soil is facilitating or it's providing like a safe place for the seed to grow. We're going to be looking at different types of soil because it's very important that I know that my heart is going to facilitate the growth that needs to happen in my life. And if my heart is wrong, then I will not grow. Everything I need has been deposited on the inside of me. Go to Ephesians 1.3. Look really fast. Ephesians 1.3. Say, I've got what I need. Ephesians 1.3. We looked at this in the very beginning of the year. Ephesians 1.3 says this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what? Who has what? Just read it. Don't tell me you're there. Tell me, follow along. Who has what? Bless Bless us with what? Spiritual. Every, all, mine says all. Who else says all? All. Every what? What else does you, what does yours say? Every. 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 Anyone else say something different besides every or all? What does yours say? Every, all. Every, all. all. Anybody else? Every Every, all. Every all, everything has been deposited on the inside of me. It's like there's everything that I need on the inside of me. And then seeds of the word of God, the word is full of everything that I need. So as I, as I have the seed, everything that I need, then it's up to me to do what? Go to Philippians. Philippians 2, 12. This is my job. Say my job. Just because I have it doesn't mean I'm growing. Do you know how many sunflower seeds are at stripes right now? What? Do you know how many sunflower seeds are at stripes? No. A lot, like bags and bags and bags of sunflower seeds. How many of y'all can like tear up a bag of sunflower seeds? Yeah, like why are sunflower seeds so good? But then you eat them so much, then your tongue becomes totally raw. And you're like, yeah, the pickle sunflower seeds go hard. Any kind really besides just like plain. But All of those seeds are not producing beautiful sunflowers, are they? No. No, because why? Because why? They don't have soil. They're not planted. But if I got one of those sunflower seeds and I planted it, it could produce some beautiful sunflowers, right? So let's look. It's in there. But what do I have to do? Philippians 2 verse 12. We looked at this at the beginning of the year. Wherefore, my beloved, this table is so sticky in Jesus' name. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but what? Much more in my absence, work out your salvation. Work it out. 
So what does that mean? If I'm working it out, then it's already it's already in. If I'm working it out, then it's already in. If I'm working it out, then it's already in. Just like I don't say when I'm outside, I'm going to go outside. Where am I? I'm already outside. Now that I'm inside, I'm not going to say I'm going to go inside. Uh, I'm already inside, right? And so if something is in me and I've got to work it out, if the Bible says to work it out, it's in me and I've got to do that. So now that I know God, I read the word, I allow the Holy Spirit to show me what to do. I know exactly where I am. It's my job to work out and to grow. And my growth is going to depend upon the soil of my heart. There's a lot of things that people can store up in their heart and it's like, You never really know it's there other than the fact their life goes nowhere. There's things that are in people's hearts that have been there for years and years and years. And even when they heard the word, it didn't do anything. Because why? The soil, their heart wasn't right. So look at this this picture of the seed and then what's in the seed and how it grows in this really good soil. So they put the seed in cover it up that looks like some good soil gave it some water washed by the water of the word now look what happens do they add anything to that seed look what it's doing dia mira so bilingual dia three instead of thrice but what is it doing but where is that coming from from the seed, it's coming from the seed. Look, y'all, look, y'all, and notice it grows down. You gotta have deep roots before you have a, a tall life. You gotta be rooted in the word. Look at the look at it down there, spreading. Y'all, look at it. You can still kind of see a picture of the seed. Now, I want you to notice what was in. That plant continues to grow. And then what does that plant produce? More what? More seeds. That plant produces more seeds. So from that one seed, what happens? It produces even more. But what the, the soil was facilitating the growth. If you just had that seed outside of the soil, would it do anything? Do you know that coming to church and even hearing the word, that doesn't mean the word's going to do something. You have to receive the word and then like bury it in your heart. That means Joshua 1.8, what did the spirit of God tell, um, tell Joshua? Be of good courage. Meditate on the word day and night. Well, what is that meditation? That's taking the word and planting it in the soil of your heart. Because this can't just be up here. Oh, well, I know God heals. But if it's not in here, when a symptom comes, what happens? You get scared and you go to the world. Whenever you just know, oh, I know God wants to prosper me. Well, then whenever a parent loses their job, because it's just up here, it's not down here, you get into fear. Well, how does it get into your heart? How does it get into your heart? You meditate on it. You speak it. It's like there's an elevator. Okay, well, if whenever you hear the word, even today, you're going to hear the word. But y'all, just because you heard the word does not make you a better Christian. It doesn't make you stronger. You have to, uh, faith comes from hearing and hearing. That second one is understanding. That's taking the word, meditating on it, and speaking it. So if there's an elevator... Like, it's coming in my ears. Okay, let's just picture. The word is coming into my ears, and so it gets on the elevator. We were on an elevator um, yesterday or the day before, and we were all, the family was getting on. Like, we had all got on, and Pastor Greg hadn't gotten on yet. Well, he was trying to lock his phone because he had given the the valet guy the key fob or whatever. And so he's trying to lock his phone on the, his car, his truck, on the phone, and, like, the door slammed shut. So literally, like, jolted him he was about to walk through you know he's thinking this is going to be open but it slammed shut right on him and so we're trying hard not to laugh and then sad because like he's left at the bottom of the elevator but eventually obviously he made it back up but you get on the elevator the word gets on the elevator in your mind so you come to church and you hear it 
Now, I'm in the elevator, and this happened yesterday. Me, my mom, and dad, Pastor Dean and Pastor Kathy, we get in the elevator with our luggage. We're on the 11th floor, and we're not going anywhere. Well, why aren't we going anywhere? I did not push the button. I literally got in, like totally preoccupied, and I didn't push the button. I didn't go anywhere. This is where a lot of believers are. They have a mind filled with all the things they've heard, but it goes nowhere. If you want the word to actually go somewhere and produce in your life, you have to put the, push the button. Like you got to get it into your heart, just like that seed. The, the stripes is full of sunflower seeds today. And what are they doing? They're just being sunflower seeds, right? Someone's going to buy them. They're going to take them to the game. They're going to eat them, spit out the shells all over, and then it's going to be over, right? There's a lot of seeds. But I want, I want the word to grow in my life. Like, I don't want to just be here and take up space. I want to actually do what God's called me to do. Do you know the only way that you complete what God's called you to do is if instead of just hearing the word, you hear it, but then you meditate on it. And as you go into your heart, what are you going to pass? You're going to speak it. You're going to pass your mouth, right? So you begin to speak the word out. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. He bore my sicknesses and carried by my diseases. And by Jesus' stripes, I was healed. I have perfect peace. Yeah, my parents may be fighting. Yeah, there may be things going on at my house. But he will keep me in perfect peace because my mind is fixed on him. So you hear the word, but just hearing it is not going to get it done in your life. You have to make sure it's in your heart. But newsflash, if the seed gets to your heart and your heart's not right, ooh. It's not going to produce. So we've got to make sure our heart is ready to receive or to facilitate. Just like today, whenever you came in, service was ready for you, right? The chairs were set out, right? The chairs were set out for you. The cameras were, were turned on. The screens were on, right? People were in their place in the little classrooms. That's why it's so important that when you're signed up to serve, you're there, you're ready. Why? Because what are you doing? You're facilitating the place for people to hear the word. You're facilitating the place for people to come in that are hurt, that are broken, that are lost, yeah. so that they can receive the word. Yeah. And so it was ready for y'all today, right? Yeah. So the room was ready for you to hear the word so that you can grow. Yeah. But guess what? You still have to meditate. It's still up to you. Now, if the room was like filled with a bunch of trash and dirty and, and nothing was on, would there be a lot of growth happening? No. no, you'd be distracted. Not a lot of stuff would happen, right? And so the room was set. Well, I got to make sure my heart's set. God, I want my heart ready for the word. That's why we're so adamant about praise and worship, like not jacking around. You know why? That's a chance to get your heart ready. If you're standing there totally disengaged, do you know what disengage means? Not ready, like not in it, jacking around, messing around, talking. Then what's happening to your heart? Is your heart getting ready? No. Y'all, that's why we have praise and worship. We don't have praise and worship to dance around and wave flags. Yeah. Okay, that's not scriptural. Yeah. You enter into his courts with thanksgiving. Yes. Well, why am I going to his courts? To wave a flag and to do ballet on the stage? No, no. To paint a pretty picture? No. no, I enter into his courts to hear from him to get direction for what I need, to get firm and solid in my belief. So the rest of the week, whenever I'm not in this place that is anointed, then what happens? I'm good. Yeah. But see, if I'm jacking around, then my heart's not ready to receive the word. Yeah. And it's going to do what we see in this video. I want you to take a look at this clip. And this is just the parable. We're going to look at it in our actual Bible. It's in Matthew 13, I believe. You can already go there. But we're going to watch this little cartoon, Matthew 13. My heart matters because the word is going to go forth. Something in me needs to grow. I need to work this thing out. But if my heart's not right, then nothing's going to happen. That's why we have praise and worship. Do we understand? Praise and worship is not the main part of the service. Do we understand? What's the main part of the service? The word. Because does the Bible say you will know the worship and the worship will set you free? No. There's no movement that is directed by God if it's not the word. Well, we're just going to praise and worship and sing praises and worship. Well, that's going to be awesome. But guess what? You enter into his courts. What happens in a court? Uh, you, you get directed. You get judgment sometimes, right? You get corrected. So I enter into his courts. You get what? 
you get sent to jail, which God's not going to send you to jail, but he's going to correct you. He's going to call you out on something. I remember when I went to teen court because I was flying. You know what I mean? I turned my Buick Riviera into a rocket ship, and it already looked like a rocket ship, and so then it was flying. There was a guy in front of me that I went to school with. He was a couple years older, and he was flying in, like, his truck. And I was like, well, I'm just going to fly right behind him. So I'm flying right behind him. Do you think he gets the ticket? He didn't even pull him over. The cop pulls me over, the police officer, and I'm like, sir, sir, (laughs) sir, he was going fast, too. And he's like, license and registration. He didn't care what that other guy was doing. He caught me doing it, right? So then I had to go to teen court. I had to do hours, community service hours at the teen center, which thank God for Boki. Boki gave me all those hours. I didn't have to clean the boys and girls club bathroom a million times or the teen center bathrooms a million times. I had to a couple times though. Like I, I did my time, but I went to teen court to be judged, right? Well, I entered into his courts, not just for judgment. Some people enter into court because, you know, they need some matters handled, They need some clarity about stuff. Well, you enter into his courts with thanksgiving. Well, what are you doing? You're preparing your heart to receive what he has for you. Guys, do you know how special you are? That God has something for you today. Only for you. He has something by his spirit for you. And it's up to you to receive it. It might not come from me talking. The atmosphere, the word is anointed. You might be sitting in your seat and maybe you receive something and I didn't even talk about it. You know why? Because you're so special. And just when you're hungry and when you're paying attention, God can speak to you. But if your heart is not ready, if your heart is not right, if praise and worship is just a time to play footsies with your friend, which is super weird, your heart's not going to be ready. Like kicking each other and like weird, just in Jesus' name. Y'all, Choose Life Kids can't be weird. Y'all can't be weird. If you're just doing it like that, like the word is never going to drop in. And if the word isn't in there, then you can't work it out. It's not going to come to pass. Prosperity isn't going to come to pass. Health is not going to come to pass. Peace is not going to come to pass. You'll stay anxious. You'll stay depressed. You'll stay that way. And you think you'll get attention for it? You won't. Well, you might get attention from devils a little bit, but then that attention will stop. And then guess what you'll be? More depressed. It's just like, I have to hear the word and it has to drop into a heart that is ready. And whose job is it to get your heart ready? Y'all, it's not the pastor's job. It's not your leader's job. They're up here eating nasty stuff. Cena's up here trying to have a conversation. And it's like, hello, crickets, crickets. Like it's, we can't like get your heart ready. You've got to do that. Like we got birthday Sunday, we got this, we got grateful Sunday, we got, we've set the atmosphere. This should be so easy in this house. It should be so easy to receive the word, like receiving this much love from pastors. Like it should be so easy. Pastors and leaders and volunteers, people that are just willing to stand at a door, sit on a camera. It should be so easy to say, oh gosh, I can grow in this place. Like no one's, no one's beating me over the head. No one's telling me I'm going to go to hell. Yeah. Like actually they love me and they celebrated my birthday. Yeah. And then they said they were grateful for me on that day. And then on the next day they just gave us candy. Like for no reason they just gave us candy. And then the next day they gave us a book that we could read. That was like $5 just for fun to grow. Yeah. It's like this should be so easy. Yeah. But guess what? If your heart's not right. You can be in the best place in the world and you still stay the same. Like a seed can produce a beautiful sunflower and it has potential to do it. But if the soil's not right, it's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. And your heart is up to you. So let's take a look at this parable and then we're going to break it down really fast. Stories of the Bible. The parable of the farmer. This is Jesus, Hey-o. who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, <laughs> and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! One day, Jesus went and sat beside the sea. A great crowd gathered around him. Oh, hey, everyone. So he got in a boat and told them many things in parables, 
Okay, listen to this. He told them this story. A farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil among rocks. The seed began to grow quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still, other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as had been planted. When Jesus had said this, he called out, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Hey, Jesus! Yeah? Later, the disciples came to Jesus and asked what this parable meant. Jesus said, the farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message, only to have Satan come at once and take it away. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are treated badly for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the desire for other things. And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Now, there's four, there's four types of soil that our heart is gonna look like. The first one falls on the wayside. Look what it says in Matthew 13, 18. It says, the one, verse 19, I apologize. They hear the word, but they don't understand it. Whose job is it to understand the word? It's our job, right? If I don't understand the word, then it means I need to study and you just keep coming to church. You keep hearing the word. You listen to messages because if I just hear it, but I don't understand it, it doesn't drop down, then it's not going to produce. What does the enemy do? He comes immediately to what? To steal the word. Like he steals the word. And so it produces nothing. So we've got that kind of soil. And then the second soil was what? The stony ground. He receives the word on stony places. He hears it and receives it with joy, but he has no root in himself. He has no roots, but endures only for a while, like a hype beast. Like you jump on the train when everyone else is jumping on the train instead of just staying on the train. Like in the Grinch, the J train has left the station. Like the train is going and it's up to me to get on and then what? Stay on. Stay on. Thank you, Ariah. I got to get on and I got to stay on. But if my heart is stony, and I put it this way, stony is like anger, unforgiveness. If I allow these things in my heart, then what happens? I may be excited in church, but then I remember what so-and-so did. Oh, I may be excited and oh, yes, praise the Lord. But then I remember that I was mad at this person or, or this happened to me and then this happened to me. And then we go through the list of all the bad things that have happened to us. And then that produces stones. So does the word produce in stony hearts? No. no. And then what was the third one? Thorns. Look what it says. Verse 22. He who received the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. Notice what all these people are doing. What are they all doing? They're all hearing the word. They're all hearing it. Do you know that only 20% of you will actually be good soil? That's what the statistic of the Bible says. 20%. 20% of you will actually be those that hear the word, receive it, 
Work it out in your life and, and, and produce fruit and do it. 20%. What would be 20% of the room, Craig? Can you do the math on that? I just am not good at math. 20% of the room. 20% will do it. Look at this third one. It says this, the, the seed falls on thorns. They hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful or just distracted. You hear it, but you're distracted. You're distracted by what's going on. You're distracted by your own feelings. You're distracted by your own thoughts. You're distracted by what others are doing. There's just distraction. Well, what is that? What is that? If I allow distractions, then the word's not going to produce. Yeah. And whose job is it to grow? Y'all, it's your job. So 20%, do we have it? 12, 12 people. 12. Okay, so let's just have 12 people stand up. You four girls in the front row? Bella, Zaylin, Micaiah, Creed, Liam, Caden, Ellis, one, two, three. Zeke, stand up. Chance, sit down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ooh, good job. Twelve. Twelve. Twelve people out of all of you that heard the same word. This is what the scripture says. Twelve will actually grow. Yeah. Now, does that have to be our, our Choose Life kids? No. No. But guess what? It will be. It will be if each of us don't decide. I'm not just going to hear the word and then allow unforgiveness, allow sin, allow distractions to keep me from growing because it's not the pastor's job that I grow. Yeah, that's right. It's not even the pastor's job that I understand. Yeah. I'm going to break it down in the best way I can. I'm going to show you little cartoons so your little brain can get it, but it's up to you yeah. to continue hearing it over and over and over again. Yeah. What do you do if you fail a grade? You redo it. You redo it. Some of y'all doing paces. If you fail, do they just say, oh, that's okay. You can move on. No, you can redo it. But in the world, that's what they say. No child left behind. Just promote them. And then we have like young adults who can't even read and write. All because they just said, you're okay. You can go. Well, now we've got like 20 year olds that are like, no sense. Don't know anything. That's not how the Bible works. If you don't get it, then guess what? You got to look over it and look over it and look over it. And then once you get it, then guess what? There's something else to do. Yeah. So you 12 represent the 20%, the good ground. Look what it says about the good ground. But he who received the seed on the good ground is he who hears the word, understands it, bears fruit and produces a hundredfold, 60 or 30 fold. You produce like there's multiplication in your life. And don't you want to multiply stuff in the kingdom? Yes. People in the world do crazy stuff to get more money, to get this or that. All you have to do is hear the word and do the word. Hear the word and do the word. And your life will be something that no one else would ever be able to say, oh yeah, that was Liam. They would have to say that's God. And then you're able to give God glory. But I believe that Choose Life Kids, you can have a seat, you 12. Choose Life Kids will not allow their hearts to be hard with sin, to be hard with anger and unforgiveness, to be hard with distractions, thorny, just distracted. You hear the word and then the moment someone says something to you, you blow up, you go off. You hear the word, honor your parents, but then the moment they say something to you in a way you don't like, you disrespect them. That's thorny, that's distracted. What other people do and how they treat me, I don't care. I'm gonna honor the word. That's a good heart, that's good soil. So if I'm going to grow, the soil of my heart has to be right. Let's look at these things really quick. We're just going to put them on the screen. If there's sin in my heart, and you're going to ask yourself, what's going on in my heart? If there's sin in my heart, what do I do? 1 John 1, 9. Let's read it together. Ready? 1, 2, 3, read. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If there's sin in my heart, you need to ask the Holy Spirit right now. Is there sin in my heart? Are there things I need to confess? Well, what about um, anger? Anger and unforgiveness. Look what it says in Ephesians 4.32. Is this what my heart looks like? Let's read it together. And be kind to one another, 
tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. But you don't know what they did. You know what? It doesn't matter what they did. What are you going to do? Are you going to allow your heart to get hard and unforgiving and angry? Where's that going to take you? It's not going to take you to well done, thou good and faithful servant. People that honor God, those are the ones that hear well done, good and faithful servant. The other ones just hear, oh, well, the one virgins that didn't have their stuff, they, <clears throat> they didn't come prepared. They heard, depart from me, I never knew you. So I don't know what you're going to hear. I believe you're going to hear well done, good and faithful servant. Tell your neighbor, are you going to hear well done? Well, if your heart's full of sin, if your heart's full of unforgiveness and anger, guys, it's not going to get there. Tell your neighbor, it won't get there with that. Last one, if you've been distracted, look what it says in 1 John 2, 15. Let's read it together. Ready? One, two, three, read. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What is that? Just distracted. So what does your heart look like right now? Is there sin? Is there anger and forgiveness? Or is there distractions? Or is it like you, you've done pretty good and that's awesome. You just continue doing that. But I want you to identify which one it is 